this video is about comparing uh, electronics cases that are 3D printed from PLA versus uh, CNC milled cases out of uh, plastics like HTPE. I'll often have pieces of electronics that need cases. In this case, I had a DC boost converter that I wanted to make a case for. I designed the case in Fusion 360 uh, and I made it uh, as a two-piece case. So there's a bottom half to the case where the board goes and then there's a top half. And the first thing I did was I 3D printed the case. You can see here the bottom half of the case that I 3D printed on my printer. My printer is not perfect. I hadn't adjusted it in a while. It was over extruding a little bit. So the quality here isn't as good as some people's 3D printers, but it's completely functional and passable. But I wanted to try uh, milling a case also because the surface finish that I get here, as you can see, is not perfect. So I started with uh, a piece of HDPE plastic. This is the type of plastic that milk jugs are made out of. It's very easy to recycle. And as a result, you can find it for really cheap. I got a one inch by one foot by one foot slab of it for like $10. So extremely cheap. To mill it, I used uh, my Onsrud single flute uh, cutter that I use on a lot of my plastic projects. Uh, I was cutting it at 45 uh, inches per minute, 15,000 RPM. I could have probably pushed the feeds and speeds further, but I hadn't cut HDPE with this cutter before, so I wanted to start with something that was a little bit conservative. My radial cut was uh, 50 thousandths and my depth of cut was 300 thousandths. The first operation was a facing operation uh, and then an adaptive milling around the outside to establish the outside profile. Then I did an adaptive contour to mill out the inside of the case. Uh, to finish milling it, I needed to use a, an eighth inch uh, end mill. I used my Onsrud eighth inch end mill to do this. This is the same single flute cutter as the quarter inch end mill. And then I did some rest machining. So any, any remaining areas that it couldn't quite get with the quarter inch, it went in with the eighth inch to finish up. I also use this uh, to mill out the little side holes where the uh, the cables go through. And I was a little conservative because the wall was very thin. Uh, and so I wanted to do an adaptive milling. Uh, and the tool path that generated was actually not very good. And as a result, it ended up leaving some edges that weren't uh, very clean. They had a lot of burrs and plastic that were st sticking out to the side. Part of this is because HDPE is not as millable as other materials, like it's not as millable as Delrin. So this is what it looked like after doing that. And you can see on the edges there, they're not very clean. I was able to go in and clean that up later just by hand uh, with a little, a little knife. And then I did uh, some spawning and then drilling. Normally I don't drill with the mill, but uh, because my, my spindle is kind of a router spindle, so it, it turns a little too fast usually for most uh, materials. 
but um, in plastic it seems to do fine as long as I clear it from time to time. And then here's what it looks like after finishing uh, the top half of the bottom half, the bottom piece. And then I flipped it uh, over and then adaptive to off um, the hat that was left over. This takes a while, and I probably could have pushed this a little faster, but I didn't. Towards the end, the CAD model had a very uh, thin base, and I modeled it thin, uh, two millimeters, because normally when you're 3D printing, you just want to print the minimal amount. Uh, and here, I should have made it thicker because having such a thin floor to the part meant that as I was finishing up here, uh, I got a little bit of kind of almost chatter or resonance in the workpiece that made the finish uh, not as good as it could have been. So here's the final part after it's been cleaned up. Um, it's a little hard to see because it's it's all white, but the finish was very nice. It was very smooth. There were just a few areas that were a little rough where uh, I had to manually clean up the like I mentioned on the the places where the cable's going to go in and out, and then also like I also mentioned the the bottom is not as uh, doesn't have as nice of a finish as it could. But if you compare it to the 3D printed part, uh, it's a million times smoother, and it's also easier to get the screws in. Uh, what I found is I just I just needed to mill the, the case to have the, um, the diameter of uh, the drill that you would use before tapping. And then rather than actually using a tap, what you do is you just screw the screw in directly to the plastic. And even the fine machine threads will, will cut into the plastic and basically uh, form tap the thread for you. And they end up being quite secure.
This is what it looks like with electronics mounted inside and the cables uh, going to it. And then for the top of the case, uh, I could have machined the top, but I was lazy and I just took the 3D printed one uh, and finished it with that. Um, and this is what it looked like. I might go back and change this, but I, I actually ended up kind of liking the two-tone look. And even though uh, it, it doesn't look as pretty, it uh, still looks kind of neat. Part of the reason I wanted to do the, the milled bottom was so that I could get the screws into it really well. And so it was less important for me to, uh, to mill out the top half. So it's worth mentioning that uh, it took me an hour and 13 minutes to print. This is with a 60 millimeter per second print speed, a 0 0.3 millimeter layer height. Uh, and it's compared to the machining time of 30 minutes. But that milling time is a little bit uh, offset by the amount of time it took me to do the cam, which was probably about a half hour, uh, along with setting up the part and the vise and everything else. So overall, in terms of time from CAD to finished product, it was probably fairly similar between the 3D printing and the machining. And that's it.